what up guys welcome to my channel cooking with tam bams today i'm going to be showing you how to make a dinner for two for valentine's day just stay tuned and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so the valentine's day dinner is going to include lamb chops i preferably like the lollipop ones but they weren't available so i'm going to be doing these and they're shaped more like a small little T-bone steak. The marinade that I'm gonna use, if you're not into lamb chops, you can do the same marinade for any type of steak and I recommend um, ribeye. Some people like T-bone, I prefer ribeye because I feel like they take the marinade better. So if you are not a lamb person, use the same marinade for a steak. So I'm gonna put all the measurements and each ingredients in the description box for your marinade for the lamb chops or steak if you choose. Um, but it's gonna be lemon juice, cracked red pepper, um, I mean red pepper flakes, parsley. Uh, these are dry and you can use that, but I am gonna use fresh for, for mine. It's a preference. If you have this at home, it's not, it's not gonna change the recipe at all, but I'm gonna use fresh for my recipe. Basil, black pepper, Dijon mustard, I don't know why mine has Chardonnay in it, but I guess it's fine. Minced garlic, salt, garlic powder, um, soy sauce, Worcester sauce, and olive oil. And then I'm using a bag. I'm going to be, um, they're already in the bag, as you can see. I'm just going to combine my ingredients and then place it into the refrigerator for four hours. If you can do this sooner and do this overnight, it's going to be better for you, but at the minimum, it should be marinated for four hours. All right, guys. All right, so this is how everything should look once it's, let me see if I can get in there. Get it focused. It's hard for me to show you guys, but. look I'm gonna place this bag into the refrigerator for four hours for the dessert you're gonna need cake mix I'm choosing this because it's more Valentine's Day thingy <laughs> strawberries three eggs one fourth cup of oil as well as so I purchased this at Walmart for five bucks, so I recommend getting it to make the process super easy. It only takes a couple minutes in that, or you can purchase these on Amazon, which is going to take a little bit longer, and you actually have to put these in the oven. And then you also need, um, for your topping, you're going to need some milk chocolate, okay? And we'll get started. All right, this is gonna be our ingredients for our mashed potatoes. Uh, green onions for the top. We're gonna to do bacon and my bacon, since it's gonna be a dinner for two, you really only need about two strips of this bacon, but I'm using jalapeno bacon, and if you haven't had it, it's bomb. <laughs> but um, sour cream, sea salt, onion powder, eight potatoes, butter. We're probably not gonna use all of this, but I'll decide once we get into it. Um, but yes. As um, the directions will be, or the ingredients will be in the description, as I said before. So let's get started on our mashed potatoes. All right, before I get started with the mashed potatoes, I'm going to put my bacon into the oven um, and let it bake on parchment paper. And if you know anything about this process, it's gonna make your bacon crispy and perfect so while that's while we're doing this do that and it'll just take out one extra thing you'll have to cook on top of your stove but you're going to cut your potatoes up into um, are those like diamonds <laughs> i don't know like this cut your potatoes up like this into small pieces place them into a pot you're going to cover that pot with water and throw in some salt
And just an FYI, I did clean my potatoes before I cut them, so make sure you clean yours. Anything that I use, whether it's parsley, uh, green onions, cilantro, I always clean everything before I use it. So even if you don't see me, I'm, I cleaned it, trust me. But make sure you cover your pot. I use a reference line inside of my pot where those screws are, and I always stop there. I don't know why I do that, but I just feel like that's the best. <laughs> it actually ends up where it works out where it's like covered. So I think it's just meant to be there for a reason. All right, you're going to put your potatoes on the stove on medium high and let them cook. And then we're going to start on the other sides. All right, for your sides, we're gonna do asparagus and we're also gonna do some mushrooms. And you're gonna need onion powder, soy sauce. You can use regular sauce. I'm just happy to use sea salt because I really prefer it. Um, I prefer ground uh, peppercorns versus black pepper, but you can always use black pepper. Definitely lemon juice and butter. We're not gonna use this whole amount of butter, but I will put the ingredients in the description as well so you know exactly what I'm using. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started on the asparagus. So I coated the bottom of my pan with olive oil and two tablespoons of butter. This is salted butter. So you want it completely melted before you place your asparagus on there. And then when you place your asparagus onto your pan on medium high heat, medium high you are going to place them all in one direction so it'll be easier for you to turn. All right, now that your butter is completely covered or completely melted, you wanna make sure that um, the bottom of your pan is completely coated. Um, so if you just give it a little swirl around, it should be good to go. And go ahead and place your asparagus. I'm gonna say cook them about one or two minutes on each side. It's gonna cook fairly quick, so just you want you want them to be tender, but have still that crunch. So, um, I would say one to two minutes on each side, depending on how hot your stove is or how good your pan is, because that also matters. Everybody's stove is not the same. Okay, while your asparagus is cooking, go ahead and hit it with um, some pepper and salt to taste which means just sprinkle it across the top of your vegetable and then we're going to hit it with some lemon juice and it's going to give it that extra oomph well after we flip it i'm going to hit it with some <laughs> lemon juice <laughs> see what i'm saying like i tried to flip this and i don't know i shouldn't have been doing what i was doing y'all because it's so easy to just grab one bunch at a time and flip them because it really is easier than I'm making it look. And I feel like I was making it hard for myself because anytime you are recording yourself or trying to instruct somebody on how to do it, I think you get a little bit thrown off by that. So I just be, I don't know. <laughs> Nevertheless, <laughs> flip them on the other side, please. Okay, so once y'all get to the struggle of flipping them over, hit it with some lemon juice. Because that's going to give it that extra little mm, that you need. And then a little bit more salt and pepper. So after about a minute or so, you're going to remove it and set to the side because this is going to be one of your sides. All right, now we're gonna get started on the mushrooms. So I literally took that pan, moved, removed it and added this pan. So it's the process of heating your stove up is not going to take as long. Like it's basically already heated up. So you're just gonna set your pan on there, let your one tablespoon of butter melt. And right here, my <laughs> 
oops i've left some of the wrapping on there so that's what i picked out for my butter y'all so let your butter melt down once your butter is melted down you're going to add your soy sauce so i'm going to put in description of what i think i use but i'm going to say it's about one teaspoon of soy sauce All right, so I'm going to say that was more of a one tablespoon kind of situation. Uh, so I'm going to put that in the description. But go ahead and place your mushrooms onto the pan. And then you're basically going to saute them. Add some salt and pepper to taste and some onion powder. It's going to be hard for me to give y'all a full description of this because I'm literally just sprinkling a little bit. It's literally just for taste. So... But go ahead and let those cook down into they brown. Um, I like for them to be a little crunchy. I don't know if that's really a crunch. But definitely sauteed. And I'm proud of myself watching myself actually stick my hand into these hot pans. I know I've been doing this for too long. <laughs> Alright, let your on your onions, let your mushrooms <laughs> cook down to your liking. I personally like for them to have that grilled look on each side. Um, so, I mean, it don't take much to cook mushrooms. It don't take that long. But I'm showing off my little culinary skills. I just want y'all to know because you see your girl over here lifting and flipping back. You know, I like to show off a little bit. And don't forget to hit it with a little bit of onion powder for taste. Alright, while your potatoes are cooking and your mushrooms and asparagus are set to the side, go ahead and chop up some green onions. You would not need all of this. But what I do do is I chop up my onions completely green onions completely and then I freeze the rest or I store them because I know I'm gonna use them for another day but don't let them go to waste because they will go bad super fast all right so let's chop up that bacon um I know you guys saw me do four strips but I only did that because it was only four strips that I had in my bag that was left and I used the next my plan was to eat for breakfast the next day the other two so but I cut up I'm chopping up two for the mashed potatoes all right so you want to make sure your potatoes are cooked in its entirety and then remove them from the stove we're going to take them from the stove drain them in a strainer and then place those potatoes into a bowl to mash All right, so now that your potatoes are in the bowl, you're going to season them with the salt, pepper, and onion powder. Onion powder is always optional, but I feel like when it comes to potatoes, you need it. There ain't no way around it. Go ahead and add it there. And then you're going to mash, use your masher and mash those potatoes up. But you're not going to complete, like don't, you're gonna leave some clumps in there. Like, don't completely mash it up. If I'm explaining that stuff, you're just gonna give it, you know, a nice mash, but don't make it into, because we're gonna make this creamy. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Don't do too much because we're gonna make these mashed potatoes creamy. All 
All right, after you're done mashing, you're going to pour in that melted butter. And I did use the whole stick, and I'm so glad that I did because it was the best thing I could have did. And this is salted butter. Then you're going to add in your sour cream. I believe this is a cup of, of um, sour cream into the mix. And stir that up. I'm switching over to a spoon because the mashing is done pretty much. Go ahead and swirl that around and get it completely mixed up. And then here is the secret ingredient, y'all. Here is the secret ingredients. You're going to add the ranch packet. A packet of ranch seasoning. And I'm going to say this is a half of that. Do not use the whole with this amount of... Um, mashed potatoes but if you happen to make mashed potatoes um, for a big party you can add the whole pack but I did not it's probably like it might not even be let's we're gonna shoot for a half a pack of this seasoning and this is gonna give y'all mashed potatoes that possess it's gonna be so bomb look at that so when you plate this you, of course, you're going to plate it with, if you decide, cheese, the bacon, and the chives. All right, so let's get started on your lamb chops or steak if you decided on steak. So this is medium high heat. I coated the bottom with some olive oil. I am taking each one of my lamb chops and pressing them down onto my pan. Make sure you press them down. We're going to cook them for, well, it depends on what you want. But I like mine's a little bit medium rare. So there's going to be three minutes on each side, two to three minutes on each side. If you prefer well done, which I hope you don't, no judgment, but I don't know how people eat that. And I don't know how I grew up in life eating that. But if you prefer that, then cook them a little bit longer. All right, after the two to three minutes, you're going to flip them over. I really, I don't know if, so this cast iron griddle is my favorite because I really like the fact that it leaves those little grill marks on it. I This is my favorite pan. It is, but it's hard to clean, y'all. I'm going to be 100% up front with y'all. It is so hard to clean. I'm always having issues with cleaning it. Nevertheless, um, I did purchase it at Ross, and I believe I got it for like 12 bucks. And it was because a piece of it was broken <laughs> at the end, because I'm sure this is worth way more than $12. Alright, so once your lamb chops are done, you're going to take them out of the pan and place them to the side for your serving. So I'm going to show you ultimately my what i do as far as plating but you can also put these on serving dishes you can put your mashed potato on a nice serving dish and you guys can sit in front of each other and eat from that so the whole concept is that to enjoy the meal between two consenting adults <laughs> all right y'all so this is the cake that we're going to be making for our little mini bun bunny cakes or bunt cakes um but let me just point out something the directions to this cake is on the back of each box so if you ain't never made no cake from the box before i feel like everybody's made a cake from the box before but anyway the directions on how to cook and what to do are there but you're literally going to take the mix 
put in your eggs you're gonna put in uh your cooking oil in water and stir and then we're gonna go from that to actually making our little cake all right so if you opt into purchasing this little cute bunt cake maker oh first of all it's so freaking cute and i do recommend that you guys buy this it's literally a walmart for five dollars for five dollars you can't beat it um and while we were in the process well my daughter was recording and while i was in the process of making this we realized that they are very tiny <laughs> they are very tiny So I just want to point out how small <laughs> these are. So we're going to do these instead. That's way too small. Okay, so we decided to keep the little mini ones because they turned out to be so cute. And it was like a dinner for two people eating in front of each other, these little bites. It was just so cute. I had to just stick to that. So we didn't move on from there. We ended up making just those little mini ones thanks to my daughter's recommendation because she thought that was just so adorable all right so now we're going to break up the hershey's milk chocolate and i prefer this one because you could just break these up and you're just going to microwave it i did it for 30 seconds stirred it up checked it 30 more seconds stirred it up until it was completely melted you do not want to burn this but this is the easiest way possible so for decoration purposes for plating purposes use a fork to kind of like sprinkle the chocolate over your little mini cakes and over your strawberries so i'm just gonna let you guys see how mine's turned out you're Listen, you're more than welcome. You could dip these little cakes in this chocolate and it'd be just fine. But the whole point is to give you like a cute little cheap dessert concept. This is what I did, but you can do whatever. You can half dip it. You can do whatever you choose. So I'm cutting up some strawberries as well to put on the plate for dessert just for some enjoyment. Um, you can also dip these full strawberries into the chocolate and that can be your dessert. It's whatever you choose. I just want you guys to have options and cheap options because that cake mix is like less than a dollar. Most of the stuff you're going to use is going to be at home anyway, like cooking oil and eggs. And then the, buy the strawberries. I think those was like three bucks. So, you know, kind of just do your own thing give your own spin whatever works for you guys if you don't like chocolate leave the chocolate out but make sure you do have a dessert i mean because you know if you was at a restaurant when you have a dessert if you anything like my hungry but <laughs> and voila here is your dinner for two for valentine's day thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe please don't forget to like comment and subscribe give me a thumbs up shoot me something if you want to see me cook something i'm happy to do so go ahead and put it in those comments but see you next time